Merry Christmas, Michael. Merry Christmas, Daniel. And Merry Christmas to all of you. Welcome to that Paddle Show Christmas edition special. So special. Do you know, I think these are going to have to go because they're impeding our speech. Uh, one thing I've never been any good at. whatsoever is picking out tunes. I've always been completely rubbish at it. What's that all about? How hard can that be? Anyway, regardless of your uh, denomination, religion or faith, we bring you greetings we on do. this Friday before the 25th of December. And to anyone who doesn't mind, Happy Bloody Christmas! Happy Christmas indeed. Yes. Reminds me of a couple of years ago. I'll never forget. Okay. Um, well, golly gosh, what a year it's been. It has been the most amazing year. <laughs> I saw this in a box. When we were getting ready to do this show, and I had to revisit this, this was a really important day for me. It, it was a yeah, it was weird. If you haven't watched our um, Christmas special from two thousand and fifteen, oh man, please do so. It's so funny. Twelfth day of effects, must my true love sent to me. Twelve cables patching, eleven knobs are cranking, ten loops are looping, nine volts are powering, eight overdrivers, seven fuzzers fuzzing, six tuners tuning, five golden clocks. Four by twelve, three voice chorus, two delays, and a G two board for me. What a jolly sing song. Spectacular sing song. Yes. The, the spirits of an aging. Well, there we are. There's tw 2058 done. Indeed, Michael. And I think 2015 as well. You are actually drinking that. <laughs> I've uh, discovered the recipe. There's only one thing left to do, I think. Um, throw another PRS on the fire, would you? Good job. Oh. I wonder how much top end this will take off. Probably a bit of 8 to 12k, I would imagine. Anyway, I have to make some effort, given that Dan's gone to such extraordinary lengths. Anyway, look, okay, we won't mess around too much. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you have something uh, joyful to drink, or eat, or whatever fills your pleasure on this day. We haven't got any booze! We haven't. What the hell? I might have an old bottle of Scrappy Jack out there somewhere. No, it's okay. Let's see if... Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Um, okay, so, right. It's been an amazing year for that pedal show. It's kind of when we've... feels like we've come of age a little bit. Yeah. God, how do you put up with this? Well, a beard oil? Um, and you... Okay, yeah, it's been an amazing year. We've, we, uh, we sort of started in the new channel this year, didn't we? We did. In this, uh, that pedal shed of dreams. Um, and we really got motoring and we've put on an incredible number of subscribers this year. Thank you. Yeah, thank amazing. you. Thank you so much to everyone yep. who's watched and subscribed. We really appreciate it, guys. It means the world. It really does, because it means we can do bigger and better things and we've got some really cool things coming next year. With any luck. It's going to be awesome. All going to plan. This is driving me insane. Okay. Personal highlights from the year, Daniel. Can you think of some examples of things which, via the magic of editing, thank you, Simon, we can remind you of uh, from shows over the year? Yep. So, big one from February, Joey Landreth coming on the show doing his thing. Yeah. So, World we saw him changing. first in, in February where he came on and you built his pedal board. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, dude. I'm going. I'm going. Mick, Mick. <laughs> and we did some gigs with him. We did gigs with Joey, which Landry. is completely crazy. We were the shortest, the shortest serving members in the Joey Landry band <laughs> of all time. And then he came back uh, later in the year and took us through um, some uh, harmonic tremolo sounds, yep. which was Revol revelatory. Yeah, uh, have a look at that now. <laughs> Ridiculous. I still do not understand how he is not the most famous musician in the world. Well, maybe we can change that. I'm gonna I'm gonna say the D and M drive. Oh, you kidding? We turned turned up at Nam uh, in January. Uh, having had a conversation with Robert Keeley saying um, that he was going to make a pedal that we'd, we'd specced out, got to Nam, and there it was. It was there. By February or March it was, we'd had delivery, and it's gone... It's, yeah. Absolutely beyond all expectations. It's had an Editor's Pick Award in Guitar Player magazine. It's in Gear of the Year in Guitarist magazine. It's had awards across the press people that we love and respect are using it loads of you guys have bought it thank you so much that, it yeah means a huge deal yeah. to us but above everything else it sounds fantastic but yeah it's also played a significant role in keeping us rolling so, keeping us in beards and yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah you should see the bill for this stuff we took a trip to the us of a and went and hung out with analog man yeah and we did some and Riff City guys at Riff City were yes, on the same we, trip. Yeah. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here, Mick here, and Hello. and also hung out with Andy Timmons in New York. Yes, the and evening. Joel Corti and uh, Eric Sexy from Zvex. From Zvex, we had a very nice time. Dan it and I wonderful discovered martinis. We discovered martinis. We discovered vodka martinis for him, gin at, for me at the Iridium in New York. Yeah, glorious. Yeah. But we went and hung out with Analog Man, a.k.a. Mike Piera. And we spent some time with some fuzz, and uh, that was... Joey Landreth, <coughs> Andy Timmons, <coughs> Mike Piera, <coughs> Joel Corti, <coughs> Eric Sexy. <coughs> Who else? I think you've, no, you've got them. Okay. Yeah. If we... If we miss, we apologise. Yeah. But that, so that trip to the States and um, hanging out in Mike's apartment of dreams yeah. and, you know, jamming with his band and stuff. I mean, that was amazing. But the, the fuzzers. Oh, lordy, lordy. So good. So, so good. good. So good. Uh, another highlight for me. I got my first ever real proper grown-ups pedal board that Dan built. G2, fully powered. Um, it was quite the revelation and has been the revelation since. Oh, so despite doing this thing for so long and playing for a long time and thinking you know a thing or two about sound, it just keeps, we keep learning stuff and it keeps getting bigger and better and better and better. And a big deal for that, two things actually, with pedalboard was one and also getting the Two Rock Classic Reverb signature, which is like the end of an amplifier journey for me. Yep. <laughs> Sounds very special. Mix happy today. Yeah. So those two things together culminated in a couple of really special gigs and sounds like I've never achieved 
just before. quickly, just quickly, there's a this little clip of you playing that rig when you um, did the Hendrix thing. <laughs> It's, um, it's all of those things you dream about when you're a little kid playing the guitar and you want to stand on stage and play the big solo. I was totally self-indulgent. I was completely... You were a rock I, I star, like, this, is, this, this is my moment and I'm going to have this. And it's amazing. the board and the two rock and everything comes together and all of a sudden I'm, I feel like I'm achieving things that I had never achieved before. And I have to say, a lot of that is down to the blooming gear. So that was... a. Big heart, aside from all the other cool stuff we've done on the show, all the mm. learning, all the guests we've had, and blimey, Kirk Fletcher, Pete Thorne, uh, Matt Schofield, Matt Schofield, gear man, dude. Where's your honking? Honking, honking, honking. How do people with beards cope? Um, <laughs> honking, all these people, Pete Thorne, uh, Phil X, gear man, dude. That was, dude, that was, that was, that was my one, my okay. next one. It was GitCon, yes. hanging out with all those guys. So... Um, Henning Pauly, um, who definitely deserves a honk. Um, ah, yeah, we hit him with bits of wood. <laughs> we, so we hit Henning with bits of wood. <laughs> of the very first video that we did, we were walking around the timber yard and, and Mick says, oh, I've got it. We went, right. And that half an hour later, the video was done. It was so funny. But Henning put together, uh, Henning, the guy we hit with bits of wood, he put together the whole GitCon thing. And the idea was getting um, music-centric YouTubers together and just throw, throw us all in a room for a week and see what we could come up with. And we didn't know what to expect, but we went along and it was absolutely amazing. I hope that in the future, people like us will be talking about GitCon with the same kind of reverence that people talk about NAMM yeah. currently. Yeah. Because it's relevant. It's relevant to us. Absolutely. It's relevant to people who watch. It's relevant to everyone out there on YouTube who likes great guitar videos. And well done, Henning, yep. for such a great so event. So we were, you know, we had did videos with um, Pete Thorne. Um, we did uh, videos with Gear Man Dude. You know, we were all there and just we had gear. Yeah. So, yeah, that was an absolute highlight for me. First one ought to be pretty obvious for both of us. DM drive. Second one, uh, we went and hung out with uh, Analog Man, and I picked up one of his sun faces, and that has been a revelation for me. Yeah, I've had NKT Red Dot. NKT Red Dot sun face, and I've got lots of fuzzes. Oh my word. Pro Analog Devices Manticore. I'm a big fan of my Clon Centaur. Always been looking for something that can do its job and the Manticore does its job and then some. Yeah, it's amazing. Manticore Engage. I'm not touching that, just, just have a play. So this year I discovered the Echo System from Empress FX and I've fallen in love with it. Um, as far as the, it's the other side of delay for me. I've got my analog delays that I love and the tape delays and things, but then all the other stuff, you know, discovering the Echo System and just how clean it is and, and yeah, it's absolutely glorious. <laughs> So 
sounds uh, spectacular, which brings us on to... Specular Tempus. We were talking to Pete. Pete we Honore. To Danish Pete. Honore, Pete. Danish Pete. <laughs> and he said, you guys have got to try this out. And we did. And it has been... It's amazing. By GFI Systems. By GFI Systems out of Indonesia. I think so, yeah. Um, an incredible little uh, reverb that has delay in it. Presets. Presets. Spatial yep. stuff. Oh, man. The power station, we did a show about attenuators, and it does the attenuation thing beautifully. But what it also allows you to do is... Um, make a quiet amp louder. Um, and so basically, it's an attenuator and a 50 watt power amp. There it is, all rolled into one. And it gives you some EQ options when you're, when you're attenuating, but also, if you attenuate your amplifier, if you crank your Marshall, it also has an effects loop in it. Yeah, so, so you that don't get you all can those then, problems. It, you get, don't get all those problems. So if you're recording and you want to put, um, you know, if you want to affect that fuzziness, you can you can still do it yeah. and it sounds unreal <laughs> uh mini vent for me mini um, by neo instruments from germany what happened we heard we, greg cock that was how it began right which sounded amazing it's an amazing leslie simulator and then we got a leslie in a real yeah. leslie and uh. we did a a show on real Leslie versus pedals. Every every single one of the real real versus pedal shows we've done this year has always ended up going. Oh, <laughs> just get the real thing. I can't move with around with a Leslie. So <laughs> the vent was the nearest thing by a mile, and it took me a while to get it. Actually, doing that Hendrix gig, which we were talking about earlier, I needed something for the for Little Wing, which wasn't um, a Univibe because Jimmy didn't have a Univibe by that point. It sounds to me like. A Leslie I can't be sure that it is mm. so I ordered one it turned up I think on the morning of the gig really? or maybe the night before when we had a, yeah no it turned up the gig was on the Friday we had the, the rehearsal on the Thursday it turned up in the morning on the Thursday I put it on my board it's got no knobs on it plumbed it in bit of a pain because it's center positive 12 volts yeah, but yeah. using Mr. Whizbang's uh, trickery here um, no worries, it was all plumbed in. Perfect sound. Yeah, we had Tor from TC Electronic over. Let's give him a hold. Oh man. <laughs> Tor. And he bought over the new Flash and the new Hall of Fame 2. They've been overhauled completely. Whole new DSP, whole new stuff. But they have this amazing foot switch. It's an expression pedal built into the foot switch. Hudson Broadcast. I don't think these pedals may not necessarily have come out this year, but they're when we sort of discovered them. Hudson Broadcast is continually surprising. Unbelievable. Everything. I, I'd assumed that the Hudson Broadcast was going to be the pedal for when all the other pedals don't work, and I think I've described it, or we have described it as that on the show. Mm. Into the Two Rock. Man. Killer. Yep. Absolutely amazing, amazing pedal. Works as a Works as a really nice clean boost, works as a good medium overdrive, works as an amazing fuzz. Yeah. Has, I don't think there's been a situation where we've played the broadcast and haven't gone, I didn't know I could do that. Mm. It's, you know, no matter what amps we plugged it into with what guitars, it, there was, it did something really special. It's got to be one of the only, it's got to be one of the only pedals that me, Dan and Simon all own and all love. Yeah. Which is kind of rare because we all do just different kind things. of different things. Yeah. So. Amazing. And then we can get sounds good. Yep, the gain trim here. So and here's the big switch that you like. And finally, free the tone flight time to uh, 
like you were saying earlier about your delay choices, you've got your analog delays, mm-hmm. you've got your kind of um, delays that give Meat you and colour and bit of drive and all of that. Yep. Same with me, ARDX20 from yep. Analog Man. Absolutely. However, falling down the rabbit hole of these super high end loud amps inspired by Dumbles, something like a 2290 was definitely in the in the sights. Mm-hmm. A TC Electronic 2290, which is an old rack delay. A very specific sound. Mm-hmm. The flight time for me does that in a pedal exceptionally yeah. well. Yeah. And Amazing. The regular viewers will know I'm not massive on complication. I struggle with programming. I can't deal with stuff on the fly. No problem. Yeah, right. Every single thing, no problem. Didn't even have to read the manual. <laughs> So something that we've done a few times this year, a lot, it, a lot, uh, is we've set up wet dry systems where the all the gain pedals are going to both amplifiers, but only one amplifier is receiving the reverbs and delays, and whether or not both amplifiers are getting the modulation pedals. What we found is by just having the delays and reverbs in one amplifier, you can you, you have this massive sound, but there's still this the attack yeah. from the direct amplifier. Um, and so that's called wet dry. So one's, one's wet. It sounds dry. ridiculous. You might be watching this thinking, oh, it's, it's crazy. Why on earth am I going to use two amps? That sounds totally over the top. Actually, you can use two really small amps really quietly. Yep. And it just it makes the sound so much bigger and fatter and all the things you want out of your little amp but maybe struggle to get. Hmm. Use two, go wet dry. Totally awesome. Wonderful. <laughs> Tremolo. Joey Nindruth came to see us. Honk again. We've honked him enough times. I know, in this but I just already. can't help honking that man. Uh, wait. And uh, <laughs> the lovely people from Origin Effects brought down a couple of vintage Fenders, one of which was a 1960 Fender Super, which was in a very particular part of Fender's history, which had harmonic tremolo. It sounds like this. <laughs> Try the real thing. So this year we've had a real echo rack in here. We've had some real tape delays, had a real Leslie, and they've been noisy and massive. Heavy. And heavy. Impossible power requirements. Ridiculous. And beyond magical. They've had this element to them that you just can't put your finger on, that when they're engaged... I can. They okay. sound amazing. They sound amazing. <laughs> yeah, they sound amazing. You know, and we had, you know, lots of pedals that emulate those sounds, but the big tip for this is to try the real thing, just so that you're informed about what it feels like. Please experience it. It is, it's, it can also be a little bit dispiriting because I've got to the end of the year going, I'm done with certain things. Right. So I'm just done with certain things to the point where I'm I can't I, I'm not going to use them if if it can't be that good sure so there's there's a slight downside there as well but I think everyone owes it to themselves to at least experience it so you know exactly and the the, the Leslie in particular yeah. and and the echo rec mm. was it's crazy it's crazy <laughs> Thank you. 
don't upgrade your Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. <laughs> okay, or similar. Lots of people get to a certain point with an amplifier where you've spent a few hundred quid, maybe a grand or dollars, uh, and you think, you know, really the next step up from there is going to be another thousand dollars yep. or another thousand pounds to get to something boutique. -y. Please, please, please try a really good quality valve preamp mm -hmm. pedal straight into the effects loop return. You can transform an amp like a Hot Rod Deluxe, which is a brilliant amp, by the way. Nothing, nothing hugely wrong with a Hot Rod Deluxe right out of the part, uh, right out of the box. However, if you want something a little more refined, a different overdrive characteristic, you want it to sound a bit more dumbly, a bit more marshly, a bit more, you know, you want it to veer away from the Hot Rod Deluxe try a really, really good valve overdrive pedals. Um, Dan and I are good friends with Simon Jarrett from Kingsley Amplifiers, mm. and in our opinion, <laughs> Simon makes the most awesome valve overdrive yep. pedals and, and preamps, pre yep. and it's important to know the difference. Yep. I happen to know that some friends of mine are about to come out with uh, some new overdrive pedal preamps as well, yes. more of which will be revealed in the new year. But yes, please try that. <laughs> get out of your rut try practicing with these cool things so we did a show this year on some practice devices um, you know I had been stuck in this thing and I've been really itching to sort of push forward with my guitar playing so I thought let's have a look what's available and it was amazing but the iReal Pro just blew me away was yeah, so great. the whole world of apps and stuff yep. for, for your tablet or smartphone or whatever it is you're using is just that particular. That I was I was astounded by that. Yeah. This week on that big show, Daniel is talking about reverb some distortion, and we might look at tremolo. Stay cool. Use an overdrive pedal for your clean sound. Another revelation. There have been moments on that pedal show where we've just done something and it's been like, oh. And you can reflect it in your comments as well. Thank you, everyone who comments. Yeah. Uh, so, let's take the example of a Fender Strat. Nice, bright, clean, present sound, or overdriven sound, turn the volume down, all the treble goes away, gets a bit muddy, it's not really not really happening, turn the pedal off, maybe you don't like the sound of your, of your amp when it's clean or whatever. Use a full frequency overdrive pedal, such as a Boss uh, BD2 Blues driver, the downside of the DNM drive, even works brilliantly with a fuzz face, with a traditional fuzz yeah. face. OCD, we did that with an OCD, it sounded amazing. Turn your volume down, the buffer in the pedal has stayed on. It's getting rid of all the capacity, or at least it's pushing your your cable runs beautifully. So mm -hmm. you can keep the high end. It sounds really nice. Sound like Andy Timmons. Use an there overdrive pedal for your clean sound with your guitar rolled down. <laughs> believes that's a red dot NKT fuzz on full. Yeah, right. Why? Yeah, I've got the volume down on the guitar. Fuzz faces especially are so unbelievably sensitive to the sensitive, to the input, to the... Usually. Of, yeah, I've got, I've got the I, You know what, I actually, think, I actually think we might be a bit nervous. That might be the truth. 
So I'm going to cure the nerves by showing you what it actually sounds like with the volume up full, right? Use a pedal to turn down. So we've done shows on boosters and how to get more out of your amplifier, but a great way to do it is to set your amp loud and have the attenuated sound, the pedal. Didn't we do that? Did we this do this in the Orange Tiny Terror episode? Yes, we did. I think yes, we did. we did. Yeah, and it's a fantastic way to do it because then you can, you know, get the amp to where it's cooking, and that's you know, and it has all the dynamics and headroom for your solo tone or for when you need that lift. But for the rhythm stuff, have the pedal and just knock it back a bit. Yep, Works where the brilliant. volume is set below unity gain, so turning on the pedal turns you down, not up. Try it, fans. Fans of amp overdrive in small amps would really, really enjoy that. Put your tremolo after your delay. Yet another massive revelation for mm. me. I'd always assume that tremolo should come before delay because I bulk it in with all the modulation pedals like choruses and right. flanges and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Dan says, no, 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 no. Tremolo after delay, because think about it, it would have been in an amp. And just, if you put it before the delay, you get all confused with the rhythms, the delay doesn't work quite right put it after your delay and to taste before the reverb. Perfect. So the first thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna put our tremolo into the delay. And it sounds like this. So what's happening there <clears throat> is the tremolo, you've got this pulsing, hmm, mm. and then that pulsing thing is being delayed. So you've got the pulsing thing with echoes of that pulse going over the top of it. But now if I do the opposite, if I put the tremolo after the delay, you get this. <laughs> Still plenty of delay there, but the, it, the the master effect there is is the tremolo because that the tremolo is con controlling the output level of everything. It's 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 modulating that amplitude so that no matter what's coming before it, you still get that pulse. Using a short delay time to punch out your guitar solo. Way. So one of the things that we've done for a while. Um, is using short delays and there's so many great things that you can use short delays for um you know what are all... we talking below 50 milliseconds yeah but you, uh, you know 50 milliseconds around there and below the idea is if you uh lots of modulation pedals the, they modulate by using a modulated delay time and like chorus pedal to, to you know and flanges it's exactly the same thing if we extend that delay time a little bit you get this doubling effect and it's when you're doing solos it can really help push your solo forward sometimes the delay can be almost imperceivable but it's one of those things like for me personally if it's not on i i just feel there's something yeah not right you it's, know? it's it's almost the opposite of what you think because normally when you use a delay on a guitar solo you go for a long delay but then the minute you do all your rubber fingers business um it just becomes this awful mess. Just a because wash of noise. Yep. And yet, shrink that delay time from let's say 500 milliseconds to 50 milliseconds. Yep. And it's like, oh, hello, I've just stepped on a volume pedal. Um, Matt Schofield did a, had a really good example of that, mm. which we'll have a look at now. So I just want to ask you about the function of that, that delay. Yes. Um, so yeah, just 
Take us through that. Yeah, arguably the most important pedal that I have. So More, what's it doing? It's doing this. In fact, let me turn the reverb down on the amp, and then you can really hear it. It's doing this. That's it. Um, so one repeat, or no repeats, I guess. It's just one echo. A bit longer than a slapback, I suppose. Right. I don't know what that is. But then you put it in with the reverb on the amp, and... Um, it's just, it's a bit like the back wall or something. Yeah, it's yeah. just, um, and it just makes a space. Yeah, so you don't really hear it, but if it's off, so let me just, uh, like. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's like, what it lets me do really is set the amp a bit brighter and make everything more lively on the amp. And then it fills in just a little area that um, would, that then sounds missing to me without it, if you yep. know what I mean. So it's, oh. it's actually quite bright. And Clean up your power. Uh, I keep saying yet another revelation, but it has been a year of revelations. It has been a year of revelations. When I first met Dan, I'd turn up with my, you know, whatever brand power brick underneath my pedal board. And he, he would never actually say why it wasn't the right thing. And I, I was thinking, oh, I'm just being snobby about it. Like, what's wrong with this thing that I paid £100 for? And he's like, yeah, well, you know, I could just tell that he was down in the mouth about it. I started to feel pretty bad, you know. Anyway, fast forward. We do a few pedalboard builds. Matt Schofield. <laughs> Kurt Fletcher. <laughs> you did one in a hotel room with Greg Howe. Mrs. Uh, <laughs> there have been a few where the, the process has been the same. We built Simon's board. <laughs> Simon's uh, uh, out on tour with Click Sergeant. That's correct. Um, Cancer Charity uh, built a uh, pedal board for Simon. The process is the same. Mm. Really, really good power. Exactly what you need. Patch leads everything in. And I. I just can't get over the difference in the tone. And neither could Kurt Fletcher, and neither could Matt Schofield, and neither could Simon, so it's not just me. Yeah, uh, you know, it's one of those things that we can say, and I, we do all the time, unless you get the power sorted, everything else is, it doesn't matter. Take up drums. Exactly. And, but until you experience the before and after of having, you know, not, of having, you know, Pre good power and post good power. It's like pre and post truth. It's all, um, it's, it's very deep. <laughs> okay, on the 11th day of uh, 12 Tipsmas, I want to share a tip about how to buy a new guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know it's coming. <laughs> My wife's going to watch this. So it's over for me. I would like to buy a 335 style guitar. Okay. It's going to cost somewhere between three and five thousand pounds. All right, man. Right? Yep. So I've hatched this little plan. I'm going to go out and buy an Epiphone dot for 299 in the same color, like blonde. Perfect. Bring it home yep. and go. Look at this cool guitar. Leave it in the house, play it, all the good stuff. It's important that it's the same color. You're living in a, in a visible? In a prominent place. Yep. And then one day, it won't be the Epiphone dot. It will be a Collings I-35 LC. Perfect. I think I could get away with it. <laughs> Try it. Okay. I, I would suggest all viewers of TPS try it. Let us know how you Let get us on. know. Let us know how you get on. Buying yourself a new pedal without getting noticed. So, <laughs> if I have, I have a certain amount of money put aside for buying presents for family. Yep. But as I said before, charity starts at home, <laughs> my home, <laughs> and. I want to buy myself a pedal for Christmas. Okay. How do you do this without getting absolutely pummeled by the wife? 
and it works like this. Or husband or significant other. Or husband other. or significant other, you know. How do I do this, you know? So, here we go. I buy the pedal I want. Mick buys the pedal he wants. And we're going to include Simon buys the pedal he wants, okay? Because it takes two, at least two. You need a consortium. But you need a consortium to do this. Right. It's like pyramid selling, but with no pyramid. Exactly. Very important. We bring the pedals. Mick wraps my pedal. I wrap Simon's pedal. And Simon wraps Mick's pedal. It's really important that you do the wrapping because if you live in the kind of household that I live in, my wife knows my wrapping. Yes, and my wife will know mine. So if, if, Mick, if I turn up, with a half-assed attempt of wrapping this thing, team will know that's my She'll know that gift. I didn't wrap that. Exactly. Yep. But it turns out and it's absolutely perfectly wrapped. She's like, oh. So here's the idea. Christmas morning comes and I'm like, ho, ho, oh, ho. Mix bought me a pedal. And exactly the same time, Mix, oh, Simon's bought me a pedal. Then Simon's, oh, Dan's bought me a pedal. So, you know, and... It's totally legit. It's like, oh, it's uh, foolproof. and then not only is it that foolproof, their wives think we are awesome. And you get the pedal you want. Exactly. It's, so it's foolproof. It is totally foolproof. Try it. Yeah. Okay. So we've looked at our top pedals of the year and our own personal highlights. We've also given you some awesome Christmas tips. <laughs> and some tips for life. Tips for life. Tips general. for a better playing life. Yep. Oh man, I'm going to be glad to get out of this beard, I can tell you. We just want to say thank you all so much for being involved in this. You know, it, this is nothing without you guys and it's it means the world to us that you, you know, every Friday so many of you are looking forward to, you know, whatever manic <laughs> craziness <laughs> is going to be. Not least us, not least us. Yeah, no, it's been a crazy year. Next year's going to be even better. We're, we are... We're going for it. Yep. 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 Can't say so, too much about it, yeah. but we're going for it. Um, massive thank you to our patrons who've supported us all this year. It's amazing, guys. And we're so grateful for it. Merry everything. Happy everything, you guys. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, also, our preferred retailers, um, you know, these guys are unanimously fantastic. And it's been great working with you guys this year. Thank you so much. Um, which is Rift City Music in the USA, it is Pedal Empire in Australia, and in the UK it is Anderton's Music. Yep. Hammer Legends, as Hammer you would Legends. say. Hammer Legends. Hammer Legends. Uh, yeah, and thanks to Simon, who's done an awesome Massive job thank you, filming Simon. and producing and doing Can you all just, of that. just, just yeah. come out here, Simon? We just need you to... So, in the true spirit, <clears throat> in the true spirit of what we're doing today, this is, uh, you know, he's been, <laughs> he's been, he's been, in, you know, Dan, Dan stole my elf suit, so I've got left with this. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. No Thank you, Simon. And also thanks to Catherine, who's been amazing, amazing and helps us do everything that we do. And everyone else involved in TPS, you know who you are. Thank you so much. It's been an amazing year, and next year's going to be even better. Yeah. So, sincerely, from Mick and myself, have the most amazing Christmas. Um, and or holiday know, period, and, or whatever it is that you do. <laughs> Have a wonderful new year, and we will see you bright and early in the new year. So cheers, guys. Bless you all. Thank you so much. Cheerio. Bye.